Thank you very much, Ellen. Um, I do remember that afternoon at the APA, and unfortunately, it reflected at the time in the 1980s a widespread skepticism among doctors, not just psychiatrists, but all doctors, about this illness. Well, I'll talk a little bit about why there was that skepticism and why, in my view, uh, the day for that skepticism is long since past. Can I have the first slide? So this is an illness. I'm st still using the uh, CFS label, although it's, uh, I share Bonnie's judgment. It's a terrible term. Uh, it is uh, defined formally by a case definition that a group of us organized by the CDC put together. Uh, probably most of you are familiar with it, but it's worth underlining since that's what we're talking about today. Severe fatigue that persists or relapses for six months. Oops, my pointer. There it is. Persists or relapses for six months, at least six months, is of new and definite onset, is not substantially relieved by rest, and results in a very substantial reduction in activities at work, at home. And in addition to that level of fatigue for that long, the person must have four or more of the following symptoms that also have been present most days for six months. Impaired memory and concentration, sore throat, pain in multiple joints, unrefreshing sleep, swollen lymph nodes in the neck or under the arms, muscle pain, new headaches, and a, an illness within an illness, post-exertional And then finally, to meet the case definition, the person should not have any active medical condition that could explain the chronic fatigue, nor any psychosis, melancholic depression, substance abuse, dementia, or an eating disorder. And when, although fatigue is a very common complaint, the uh, problem that people bring to a doctor, uh, one of the top 10 most common problems, only a small fraction of people who walk into the doctor's office and say, my problem is I'm just tired all the time, I don't have enough energy. Very few of the people who say that wind up meeting this case definition. Back uh, during that time at the American Psychiatric Association meeting, virtually nothing was known about this illness. Uh, so for the skeptics, there was very little information to either support or reject their skepticism. But since then, there has been an enormous amount of research. And I guess I want to start today by just underlining that while those of us involved in trying to study and cure this illness have not succeeded in f fully understanding it or in curing it. And for some of you, that means that all of the scientific work I'm going to be discussing has really not brought help to you. Uh, there has nevertheless, every, every medical illness is ultimately solved by a scientific process, and invariably that process takes years and years because none of us are that smart. So in the last 20 years, there have been over 5,000 scientific studies of CFS published, over 300 of them in the most prestigious medical journals in the world. There have been eight international research conferences, the last of which, last March 2009, had over 160 scientific presentations from people all over the world, scientists and doctors from all over the world. Let's talk first about, I'm going to focus mostly today on things that are new since I last talked to this group about probably a decade ago. Um, I go back, my memory is, Bonnie, to the late 1980s, uh, first time that I talked to this group. Uh, and, um, and I'm going to come back to one thing that I think I said the very first talk in the late <coughs> 80s in just a moment. But let's talk first about the severity of the fatigue in this illness. 
There are now a group of scales or instruments to measure just how badly impaired the function of people with any kind of illness is. And the very best of those instruments, an instrument called the SF36, was used on a large number of people about 10 years ago. The general population, the pa patients with heart failure, patients with depression, and patients with this illness. This instrument gives eight different scores, and that's what these eight different columns are. And the higher the score, the better someone is functioning on that uh, domain of function. And as you can see, this is where people, healthy people in the general population are. In the red line are people with heart failure whose functional status on all but one of these subscores is below. Patients with major depression in blue are lower than the patients with heart failure on several of the domains except for one. But patients with chronic fatigue syndrome are actually lower in their functional capacity than patients with heart failure. And this study, this is our own study, but it's been replicated by many groups now all over the world. As a result, this illness is, uh, is damaging the society, the greater society, beyond just the people and their families who are affected. Uh, a survey conducted by the CDC uh, of patients with this illness, a large number of patients, found that there was a 37% decline in productivity and the ability to function around the household, a larger reduction in ability to function in the labor force, and estimated that the total cost to the United States each year from the productivity losses caused by this illness not included in these costs are the actual medical costs of caring for the illness. Just the loss of productivity of people who can't work or can't work full time anymore was $9.1 billion a year, which at the time they did this study was greater than the bottom line of the biggest company in the world, which is Walmart. So this is a lot of money a lot of lost productivity to the society, that alone for people who only want to attack illnesses that seem to have a, a, an important impact on society financially, that number alone should catch and is catching people's attention. Next slide. So, as I said a minute ago, this is an illness that still to this day is defined by a set of symptoms. And anyone can say that they have a symptom. Anyone can say that they have all of the symptoms in the case definition. So the question many doctors since the beginning of this case definition have asked is, uh, is there any objective evidence of things in the body that are going wrong, that are different in people with this illness from healthy people? or different from depressed people, or different from people with other illnesses that cause fatigue, like multiple sclerosis, for example, or lupus. So are there objective biological markers that are abnormal in these patients who subjectively say they have all these symptoms? That was the question scientifically. And in my view, until that question was answered, skepticism was appropriate because you would expect in a biologically based illness to be able to measure what was, what was wrong biologically. And the other question is, do we understand how these symptoms are caused? And I think my answers, as I've implied, to this is now absolutely yes. This, is, this controversy is over. Uh, do we understand how the symptoms are caused, what the basic biology of this illness is that leads to the symptoms? No, I think we don't understand that yet. So how I've said there are objective biological things going wrong in people with CF.